in Redgrave, and I've got a secret. I've got a secret brought to you by Tegra, the new medicated formula for psoriasis sufferers that gives three-way relief from the symptoms of psoriasis. From New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Steve Allen. And welcome indeed to another edition of I've Got a Secret. Now that we've met Miss Lynn Redgrave, we'll be back shortly. Let's meet the members of our panel. Who are, of course, Betsy Palmer, Bill Cullen, Bess Meyerson, and Henry Morgan. That's our panel. And uh, now it's time to meet our first contestant tonight, who happens to be uh, way up there on about the eighth floor. Are you going to come down? I guess not. I'll probably have to go right up to you. <laughs> you know, it's pretty scary up here, I'll be honest with you. Uh, would you tell us your name, sir, and where you're from? I'm Stephen McPeak, and I attend Seattle Pacific College in Seattle, Washington. All right. I hope you will live to attend it again. Uh, do you mind if I ask you immediately why we are up here? Because i got a secret. You got a secret? Well, in that case, then you might as well uh, whisper it to me. We'll show the audience what it is. <laughs> huh. Well, the clue uh, to Mr. McPeak's secret panel concerns, of course, why he's up here. And we'll start the game. And let's make it a quick game panel. I'm not too thrilled to be up here. We'll start the game with Bess Myers. Uh, Steve. Are you going, to, is anything going to happen to any of the partitions that are visible to us? Are they going to open up in any way? No. I see. Now, are you going to, there's a pole that protrudes. Are you going to shinny down the pole? No. Are you going to come down the ladder? No. Are you going to, at any point, not have your feet on anything? You're going to be suspended? No, I mean, you're no. not going to dive. There's no water in that tank or anything, is no. there? <laughs> Twenty dollars down, sixty to go. Henry Morgan. Steve, is that uh, does the ladder move? No. I hope not, for both of our sakes. Are you going to remove yourself from where you are now? Yes. Are you going to end up on the ground? <laughs> no. All right. No, are you going? Are you going into that thing? No. Well, when you move, are you going up? No. Let me do the first question again. Are you going to move from where you are now? Yes. Are you going to get in with Steve? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're going to get even with Steve. And <laughs> $40 down, Betsy. Stephen, uh, do you use that pole, the red pole next to you, for balancing purposes? No. Is the pole stationary? Yes, yes. the pole won't help you. I'll give you the a little help. The pole won't help us. Do you have something hidden and con or concealed behind this paneling? No. That you're going to, you're not just going to sit there like that, are you? <laughs> this is our secret. We're sitting here like two idiots. That's well, are you going to do something on the swing with, uh, with, uh, are you going to swing with Steve? No. <laughs> no, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, Steve. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, does it have to do with the ladder? No. <laughs> Sixty dollars down. Big Bill Cullen. Steve, if if that the uh, 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 that structure there isn't hiding anything, why is it there? I mean, is there a reason for it being there? It was the only way he could get up here. <laughs> you mean I had the swing? <laughs> <laughs> Were you giving him a lift for heaven's sake? You mean you built that whole thing just to get up there? That's right. Believe it or not. And you are going to move from where you are, Steve. Yes, but neither yes. up nor down. No, he is going to move. Yes. But not up or down. Correct. So he's going to Correct. move sideways. Mm -hmm. He's going to spin around on something up there. And faint. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he is going to move around. He's going to walk on air. <laughs> no. Well, this is a, uh, quite a tough one. When you see what uh, Mr. McPeak has brought with him, panel, you'll understand just why he has to be up here. Gentlemen, will you bring in the object uh, to which I refer? There it is. It's the world's tallest unicycle. Now, 20 feet 
may not sound like a heck of a lot of feet, but when you pile one foot up on top of the other, and believe me, from up here it is a heck of a lot of feet, and it's as high as a unicyclist has ever gone, <laughs> and may ever go again. Um, I'm not going to ask you why you ride it, uh, Mr. McPeak, but um, where did you ever find a 20-foot unicycle? Uh, you don't find these in stores, but you have to build them, and I built this one. I see. Well, uh, may I ask why? Well, because I've mastered all my six-footer and 12-footer, now I have to have the tallest unicycle, this one. <laughs> oh, and well, if you master this, good luck. Well, I'd better get out of your way before I get killed, too. Uh, so, gentlemen, if you'll take me down and away, we'll get to that. The gentleman uh, you will meet down here on the, the bottom floor, ladies' lingerie and so forth, is Mr. Uh, Gene Grass, who... Uh, how are you? <laughs> My secret is I can't get out of the swing. That's... How do you do, sir? Uh, this gentleman, believe it or not, actually rides on Mr. McPeak's shoulders while he does this unicycling. Uh, but I, I'm not joking now. That one we saw it this afternoon was so scary, we decided not to try it again. It, it just uh, scared us all to death. But we're happy to have you here. And uh, I vouch that you really can do it. Now, I'm going to get well out of the way, and gentlemen, uh, the stage is yours. This is quite a uh, dramatic thing to witness. Incidentally, you people out in Washington State uh, are soon going to be able to see this uh, remarkable demonstration in the Saturn Cyclists' shows. It starts out with a frightening move forward. Thank you very much, Steve McPhee, for being with us this evening. It was a fantastic thing. We'll be back in a minute with more mayhem after this message. Isn't that something? Got little pieces of rope all over my slide. Now may we have our next contestants, please. Nice to have you uh, with us, gentlemen, make yourselves comfortable, if you will. Move in quite close and uh, tell us your names, please, and where you're from. And uh, my name is Jack Drucker, and I'm from King Street, South Carolina. Uh, Jack is uh, 59 years old, by the way, and he's the youngest of the four Drucker brothers who are here with us tonight. Next. Uh, I'm Charles Drucker. I'm also from King Street, South Carolina. Charles Drucker is the second youngest brother. He is 65 years of age. Who's next? I'm Max Drucker from Kingston, South Carolina. And Max, you're 74, is that yeah, correct? Right. And the oldest Drucker then? I'm Harry Drucker, and I'm from Miami Beach, Florida. You are 77. 77, right. Well, none of you look your age, I must say that. Panel of the four uh, Drucker brothers are uh, in New York for a very special reason. So, gentlemen, will you whisper to me what brings you to New York? Okay. <laughs> The clue to these uh, four gentlemen's secret concerns the reason that they're in New York, of course, and we'll start the game with Bill Cullen. <laughs> from years of listening to audiences laugh, I get all kinds of messages from the laughter there. Uh, does, does the reason you gentlemen are in New York have anything possibly to do with ladies? <laughs> that's a lady laugh, that's a straight, hetero, uh, never mind. Um, is the thing that's going to happen, are you all here for an event? No. Yeah. No, 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 They got a little family fight. It depends on what you mean by an event, you know. Oh, well, I mean like a, a ceremony of some kind. No, no, no. It's going to be very unceremonious what goes on here. <laughs> it's going to happen to Harry. Hmm? First of all, is something going to happen to one or all of the Drucker brothers? I hope not. No. <laughs> 
Uh, something happens to somebody every day, you know, it's hard to say. Uh, well, let's go to the next uh, question. $20 down, Beth. Well, it seemed to me that Harry was most eager to say no when we talked about an event. So is Harry, Harry, are you specifically involved in this more than your other brothers? No. Not, no, not, no. No. not exactly. Now, are there four women involved in this? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Have you seen these women before? Oh, yeah. Oh, are they your wives? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, they are. And, uh... So you, I thought maybe you were all here for blind dates or something. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting guess. Forty dollars down. Henry Morgan? Um... Did, did you bring your wives with you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> is, there, uh, is it an anniversary of any kind? No. 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 Is, are there other people mentioned in this secret other than your wife? No. 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 Um, did you come here for a specific reason that we ought to know? Yeah. 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 Yes, it was not, however, necessary for them to come here for that reason. I don't care. I'm finished. <laughs> $60. Betsy? Well, <clears throat> I don't think you can keep good men down. And you all look like good men. So are you all new fathers? Harry says yes. Harry said yes. No? Are you all new husbands? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's figure it out. They're all newlyweds and they're all here in New York on their honeymoon. Gentlemen, we offer you uh, congratulations. Now, did you all get married in a quadruple oh ceremony? No. 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 Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Let's meet the ladies. I know everybody wants to do that. We'll open the curtains now. Gentlemen, shall we join the ladies? As they say yeah. The Dearly beloved, <laughs> uh, congratulations to all of you. Uh, now, let's see, which of you got married first? We, we did. did. Group on the end. This is uh, Charles Drucker, and you are Helen yes. Drucker. And do you think you might have inspired the other Druckers to get married? I don't know about all of them, but maybe these with sisters. <laughs> According to my notes here, this is, of course, Charles Drucker, and you are Helen, his bride. And do you think, uh, no, no, wait a minute. You're Jack Drucker. Jack. Yes. No. See, I almost talked you into it. <laughs> so you were the second group to get married, were you? Second pair. Yeah. And then this must be Max Drucker again, of course, right. and his wife, Lila May. Were you inspired by your brother's marriage? No, but my wife's marriage. My <laughs> wife. <laughs> you were inspired. Now, <laughs> oh, what does he know? Now then, uh, how did you happen to marry? If you don't mind my answer. Well, she was in business. She was my employee for 17 years, and the last two years she was my partner. Oh. And so she so was hanging around. Too much. She was hanging around too much. We had to get married. <laughs> and that leaves uh, Harry Drucker and yeah. uh, you are Florence as well. How did you two meet? Well, we met years ago, probably 21 years ago. Probably. Yeah. Uh -huh. My husband, my uh, son, married our daughter. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of sons marry a lot of daughters, but the in-laws don't get married. Well, I retired in Florida. I proposed to her through the mail. She came down, and we got married. How's that? Great. Yeah. So you're, you're not only husband and wife, but you're also in-laws. Yes. And uh, Charlie and Jack are brothers and brothers-in-law because they're married to sisters. Uh, that makes the girl sisters-in-law because Charlie and Jack are brothers. Would you all repeat that, please? <laughs> I know I can. Well, congratulations to all of you and uh, many happy returns. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. Thank you. We have our special guest for the evening in a minute. That's Lynn Redgrave after this message. Our special guest for the evening, recipient of the Golden Glove, Golden Globe. <laughs> It'd be funny if she came out and hit me right in the chops for that. 
the Golden Globe Awards, and also named as the Best Actress of the Year by the New York Film Critics. She has just been nominated for an Academy Award for her performance in Georgie Girl. Currently starring in the Broadway hit, Black Comedy, here is England's gift to America, Miss Lynn Redgrave. <laughs> Love business. <laughs> There's a sports thing in this country called the Golden Glove. Oh. <laughs> there, there used to be. I, I don't right, know. Now, uh, is uh, black comedy your first appearance uh, in front uh, of American audiences? Yes, it is indeed, yes. yes. Do you find that there's much difference between an, an American audience and a British audience? I think there is quite, quite a lot of difference. Um, to go into it would probably take too long, but uh, I think uh, audiences in different towns in any one country vary an enormous amount, and so from country to country they vary even more. And um, this is a great talking point usually with actors. Indeed. About who have played Broadway and London, and we sort of chat away and discuss. Well, we've done a little chatting about that point ourselves, uh, Ms. Redgrave, so we're going to try a little experiment now based on that idea. Before the program tonight, we selected 100 people here uh, in our studio audience as a representative group. We gave them a questionnaire to fill out uh, so we could get some uh, information about them so that we could compare the results with a similar survey that we took with the television audience in London. Now, in other words, we do have the chance to somewhat scientifically compare two audiences of different nationalities. Yeah. I have the uh, American results here. Uh, do you have the results from Britain? Yeah. Fine. Well, panel, here's what we want you to do. We'll divide you into two teams. Let's say Betsy and Bill against Bess and Henry. Uh, Lynn Redgrave will give you the results of the survey of our American audience. Uh, and using that as a guideline, uh, see if you can guess what the <coughs> English audience answered to the very same questions. Lynn, let's start with the first question. Right, well, we asked this studio audience, have you ever flown in a plane? And out of 100, 75 said they had. So, of the same question to 100 people in a TV studio in London, how many do you think answered yes? And would you uh, arrive at one answer, of course, for each team? <coughs> by... We both worked on it. Yeah, you, 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 you work as teams yeah. and arrive, if you would, at one answer. Semi-final American. 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 Oh, okay. Bill yeah. and Betsy say yeah. that it's... No. We think it's less, no. but we don't no. know how many less. No, but I, I think Could we meet you later after the show, perhaps? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Get some kind of an answer. They live, you know, in Europe, and they do fly from country to country oh. so much easier. They may tend to fly a little bit more than we do. Betsy and, and Henry, you are... that much later. I think Betsy and Bill think we've never got on an airplane. Yes, Henry. Yes. Yes. Bess and I have uh, disagreed. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we've agreed to agree. She says 35, I say 25 for the answers from a typical American studio audience. You want to say 30 and average? So we say 30. Okay. Uh, for an English studio audience. English. Betsy and I disagree too. But I wrote down 67. All right. I don't and know what it means. Nothing. <laughs> is it percentages or how many people? How many out of a hundred? Yeah. Comes out right. the same. Yeah. And the answer is? The answer is? Uh, 56. <laughs> oh. oh, well, we're close. Yeah, you were good. 30. So that's about... No, no, we're a bit closer. men and 20 women. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay, what's the second question? <laughs> well, we asked this audience, have you ever been to England? And 23 people said they have. We asked 100 people in England, have you ever been to America? So, we'd like to see Betsy and Bill are putting their heads together, as are Bess and Henry. All right. And what do you say, Bill? We say 15. Betsy, give me a break. It's 15. How many percent? And the other team? It doesn't make any sense the percentage or number. Other teams? We, uh, our difference is pretty dramatic. I say 8, and Bess says 18. Who are you going to choose? We could split it down the middle, and we'll take, uh, Eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were all wrong again. Five. Oh, oh, I should have stuck with my eight, shouldn't I? Yeah, yes. it would have been much better. Yeah. Right. Well, we're not winning anything. Three men and two women went to England, America. Five. Now, this one's kind of a good question. We asked this audience, did you go to church last Sunday? And 47, probably lying, said they did. <laughs> and we asked the same question of 100 people in England. Oh, honest, upright Britishers. So we want their answers, please. How many here? 47? 47, 47 here in the United States. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't have anything else to do. That's right. <laughs> okay. okay. We just talked it over and decided that you lying British said 65. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, Bill? And we think London is not much to do on Sunday, so 80 we took. This you, is an interesting answer. Well, you've not been in London or England for a long time because five people went to <laughs> <laughs> 
course, we checked into this American figure of, tw of uh, 47 percent and discovered that of that group, 12 percent went there to rob the poor box. <laughs> I'm to change you. What's the next one? Next one is, um, this audience has asked, have you ever met a president of the United States? I, I suppose that means any old president. Yes. And, <laughs> so this is the present one. And 22 said they did. And so we asked an English TV audience, have you ever met your queen? And I suppose that means this specific queen, yes, queen. and she's been queen for quite a long time. So what do you think? And it means me. You really mean me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Not to I'm be well, presented to. Well, would you like a garden party? Or, you know? As long as it doesn't mean just waving on the street, you yeah. know, from, from a distance. We could have been at a large garden party or something, yes. I'm surprised that 22% of the Americans have met a president. So am I. I, I never they're met all one. lying like the church goes, yes. All right, what's the answer from the uh, Betsy and Bill team? We came up with a fast four. Four percent have met the queen? What do you say? We say a fast none. None? We're gambling. Well, six said they've <laughs> met their queen. Mm. One man and five women. Very good. Right? Yeah. We accept. I'm happy. <laughs> right, well, do we have time for another question? Well, um, here we asked people here, do you have a telephone in your house? And our audience here answered, 92 of us have telephones, they all said. So we asked the panel in, no, panel. I can't read my own note. Panel, how many do you think answered yes to that question in England? 92% here. Yeah. 80. 80, says Henry and Bess. And uh, what's the we'll 60. 60. 60. Well, you're sort of not really right. 52 have a telephone. That's well, not really bad. Closer on that one, yes. I find that very hard to believe that only 52 people in your English... What English audience did you get? I don't know. It's a television studio audience. Of course, the people who go to studio, uh, who sit in studio audiences at various programs are not entirely representative of a whole society. No. For better or for that, worse. I would think that's true, yeah. Well... Have another one? You have another one here. And this was to women only. And the question was... Have you ever worn a bikini in public, I think it has to be stressed. And uh, of the 50, 50 women this is out of who helped us here, 10 said they did. And 50 women in England were asked this. So how many do you think? Out of 50 now. What did they look like? <laughs> <laughs> None of your business. Out of 10 said? Out of 50. Oh, five. Five. Yeah, five. Five or fewer. In Five in England, say okay. Betsy and Bill and Bess and Henry. I got it down to three. Three? <laughs> What's the answer? Oh, 17. We did oh. very well there. Yeah. I'll now try 24. <laughs> <laughs> a little more daring in uh, England. Uh, we'll thank you. Oh, heck, I thought we had time for another one. Out of, uh, I wonder what percentage of people get annoyed by that buzzer when it cuts in mm -hmm. and you're having fun. Well, then, this was a fascinating idea, and I do hope you'll uh, join us again soon and, and play this game uh, again with us. Yeah. At the moment, uh, we'll be right back after this message. For this. <laughs> oh, hello there, folks. Say, that wraps up I've Got a Secret for tonight. As a matter of fact, it wraps up uh, I've Got a Secret. Uh, this is our 15th and final season on the air, and uh, this, of course, is our final program. So, for all of us here around the old campfire, meaning Betsy Palmer, and of course, the ever popular Bill Cullen, <laughs> and Bess uh, Meyerson, and Henry Morgan, and if any of you incidentally care to make any uh, statements, I think that would probably be as inappropriate a time <laughs> as I can think of. Well, just remember that when you close the door, a new one opens, each and every one of you. And I would like to say thank you to all the people out there who have made my life so happy these last 11 years. I'll see you around. And I've been on 15 years, and I haven't done one moment's work. I admit that. <laughs> and I apologize for stealing the money. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mark. <laughs> And it's been glorious fun, and I think that we've enjoyed it as much as you have, I hope. I had a nice time. Yeah. <laughs> we all did indeed, and we're very indebted uh, not only to our fine audiences over the, all these years, but uh, to the wonderful people that you don't see on camera, uh, the staff, all the members of our production team have worked so hard. We have the easy part here on the air. They work hard all week to put it together. It's been great fun working with all of them. Good night. We'll see you soon. Slash.